In this video, we're looking at a very important application of reaction stoichiometry, which is solution stoichiometry. This is a part of AP Chemistry Unit 4, Section 5. So we're going to take a look at this today. Now, often we carry out reactions in the laboratory in solution. And so it's important to be able to know how to do this. We're going to use the same three-step process that we learned in an earlier video, where step one is convert to moles. Uh, step two is use a mole ratio using the, the coefficients of the balanced equation. And the third step is to convert to our final unit, which might be grams or something else. The only real difference here is that at the beginning, we're going to consider the volume of the solution in liters. And when we do step one, which is convert to moles, we're going to use molarity as the conversion factor. Now, uh, I'll show you how this works. It's actually quite simple. But let's take a look at a first problem here. It says a student tries to produce a precipitate of barium sulfate using the following balanced equation that you see here. If the student adds 50.0 milliliters to 0 0.100 molar barium nitrate solution to excess sodium sulfate solution, what mass of barium sulfate solid should be produced? So once again, we're going to start with what's given to us. So it's the barium nitrate. And we start with liters. So we should know that 50 milliliters is the same as 0.05 liters of barium nitrate. So that's what I'm going to write down starting out. And at the end of my stoichiometry here, my goal is to convert to grams. Mass is measured in grams, so grams of barium sulfate down here at the end. Now the, st uh, the first step is convert to moles. And so in my first step, I have to put liters on the bottom. And since I'm converting to moles, moles on top. Now, like I said, instead of using the periodic table and the molar mass this time, I'm going to use the molarity. So I look at the molarity of that barium nitrate and it's 0 0.100. That means it's 0 0.100 moles per one liter. So I can, I can actually use that as a conversion factor. So I'm going to cancel liters. And I'm now in moles of barium nitrate. Now step two is the mole ratio. And this is just the way it has been before. In fact, from this step on, it's basically the same as any other stoichiometry problem. Uh, use the mole ratio, so barium nitrate on the bottom and barium sulfate on the top. And I have to use the coefficients of the balanced equation to put those numbers in here. So barium sulfate is a 1. Barium nitrate is a 1. This is a 1 to 1 ratio. So barium nitrate is out. Now, I have to convert from moles to grams. So in my last step, I have to put one mole on the bottom, grams on the top. And as always, if it's how many grams in a mole, we use the atomic mass. We find the molar mass using the periodic table. It's about 233.39 grams in one mole of barium sulfate. So now I just have to cancel moles and calculate 0.05 times 0.1 times 233.39. And the answer I'm getting is about 1.17 grams of barium sulfate. So that's how you solve these problems. This is basically just an application of reaction stoichiometry. Really, the only difference is in that first step. When you convert to moles, you use the molarity as a conversion factor. After the reaction is complete, some ions will remain in solution. Rank the following ions in order from lowest to greatest concentration. We have the barium ions, sodium ions, and sulfate ions. Well, there are some clues that we can look at in the problem. It tells us right up here that the sodium sulfate is excess. So what that means is at the end of this reaction, we're going to have quite a bit of sodium and sulfate left over which means that the lowest concentration in solution would be the barium. And so that's going to be the lowest concentration. Now, once we go higher than that, we can see that, of course, sodium and sulfate are left over. But a pretty good chunk of the sulfate is going to be going toward producing this barium sulfate precipitate. So I'd say that we'd have a fairly low 
concentration of sulfate, not as low as barium, but it, it, it is still going to be fairly low. And the highest is going to be sodium. And the reason sodium is the highest is, notice, well, actually twofold. Notice that it's a two to one ratio here, two sodiums in that uh, compound. But also, sodium is always a spectator ion, as we learned uh, in an earlier video here in Unit 4. And since sodium ions don't really react and form a precipitate, you're going to have a whole lot of sodium ions swimming around in solution. So that's that answer there. Let's try another problem. In the reaction above, a zinc phosphate precipitate is produced. If a chemist adds 60.0 milliliters of 0 0.100 molar zinc chloride solution to 75.0 milliliters of 0 0.150 molar sodium phosphate solution, what mass of zinc phosphate solid should be produced? So you might notice that this time we actually have two quantities of reactants given to us. We have, it tells us how much zinc chloride and how much sodium phosphate. So this sounds like a limiting reactant problem. And yes, we can have those for solution stoichiometry problems as well. So I have to take, now this is 0.06 liters of zinc chloride and 0.075 liters of sodium phosphate and write that down. And for both of these uh, quantities, our goal is to convert these to grams of zinc phosphate. So way down here at the end, our goal is to convert to grams of zinc phosphate. So let's go through our first uh, process here. We're going to convert to moles. So liters on the bottom and moles on the top. And once again, since this is a solution, we have to look at the molarity of the zinc chloride to get our, our numbers here. So for zinc chloride, it's 0 0.10 molar, which is 0 0.100 moles for every one liter. So we can cancel liters. And now we can continue with the rest of our stoichiometry. Our mole ratio, so zinc chloride, would have to go on the bottom. And zinc phosphate would have to go on the top, since that's what we're converting to. And the equation tells us that this is a 1 to 3 mole ratio based on the coefficients of the balanced equation. Uh, zinc chloride is out. And now I have to convert to grams. So moles on the bottom, grams on the top. If I take three zincs, two phosphoruses, and eight oxygen atoms and add those together, I have a molar mass of about 386.17 grams per mole. And I can cancel moles and do some multiplication and division. So 0.06 times 0.1 divided by 3 times 386.17 gets us 0.772. Now in a limiting reactant problem, we have to do this twice. And so in my next process, I have to convert to moles. So liters on the bottom, moles on top. Now once again, I'm using the concentration of sodium phosphate here. So or, uh, it says that I have 0 0.150 molar sodium phosphate. So that means 0 0.150 moles per liter. And so liters are out. My second step is the mole ratio. So sodium phosphate on the bottom and zinc phosphate on the top. And this is a 1 to 2 mole ratio according to the coefficients of the balanced equation. My sodium phosphate is out. And now I'm in moles of zinc phosphate. I want to be in grams of zinc phosphate. So once again, convert to grams. So moles on bottom, grams on top. It's still 386.17 grams in a mole of that. So now I calculate and take 0.075 times 0.15 divide by 2 times 386.17. And the answer I get here is 2.17. Now, since this is a limiting reactant problem, which answer do I go with? It's always the lowest, isn't it? So the answer is the 0.772 grams of zinc phosphate. That's how much I would expect to be produced here. Now, which compound is the limiting reactant? Well, once again, it's the reactant that produces the smaller amount. So that would be this zinc chloride right here. So I hope that you've been able to learn something about solution stoichiometry. Some of these problems, especially if they're limiting reactant, can be kind of long and, and lengthy. But really, it's, it's the same as a regular 
stoichiometry problem. The only difference is in that first step, you're going to use your solution concentration, that the molarity value, to convert to moles. My name is Jeremy Krug. I've been teaching AP Chemistry for something like 24 years. If you learned something from this video, please smash that thumbs up button and join me in the next video where we're, we're going to wrap up Unit 4, Section 5 by looking at some uh, example problems and applications of solution stoichiometry problems.